Alright, so I'm going to be doing a couple mold castings in my pressure pot. And here is the epoxy resin and the curing agent. This is from the epoxy resin store. It says easy mixing, one to one, cures fast and clear, excellent chemical and moisture resistance. Used for coatings, fiberglass, boat building, waterproofing, casting, sealing, woodworking, electrical, potting, art, and hobby. And that's all the information that I have on it. So I practice proper PPE. I always wear a respirator and goggles, nitrile gloves, and a lot of times I'll wear a hazmat suit when I'm doing my uh, canvas art and using the torch or heating it up at all. So, um... I don't know anything else about this other than we're going to use it to put in some of the molds that I have in the pressure pot and we're going to mix it with some colors uh, that were sent to me to test out to see if I like them uh, to carry as one of my brands so we'll get busy. So this is the A bottle, it's the resin side, it's pretty thick. A. So I'm filling, filling it up to here on each cup. And then this is the B side. The hard one. So we're gonna take a little take a towel, clean up any drips on the bottle right away. Now, I just store these on the floor close to, close to my um, oil burner so they just stay a little bit warm. They certainly could be warmer, that's for sure, but this is what we have. You want to watch when you're scraping these little cups that you have a firm grip on your cup. Several times I've had the cup split out of my hands and knock over the other half of the mix. So just make sure that you get a nice grip on the cup. Because that is a mess that you don't want to find out about. So it's about, let me see how many degrees it is down here, 72.9 down here. So I can feel the thickness of the resin side there. So I don't know that I'll show all this on the actual edited video but in case I do you want to scrape I'm gently turning the cup as I scrape all the sides 
to mix it well and you scrape your sides keep scraping your stick and I do some figure eights in there I just kind of keep moving it around I scrape down the edges of the cup I always use a two cup method whether it's silicone or resin work that is just the perfect answer to never having any spots that do not cure so to be thorough in your resin or molding work you always want to use a two cup method it is worth the extra time when you switch into the second cup you want to change your stir stick also I probably made too much as usual, <laughs> but I trust me, I have a couple hundred molds just sitting around here. I could pour it in something and make good use of it. So the colors I have to use are, you know, I'm. Um, Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not big on opaque colors and that I do a lot of flashy and sparkly resin work that catches the eye. So right now I have a lot of companies sending me samples because my company is expanding and uh, Looking to offer some more awesome products on my website that I've been building up for the past year. I just want to thank everyone who has supported me and been a customer. And I have so many repeat customers <laughs> that I am just floored. And it feels really good to make all these artists and crafters happy. It really fills my heart. I have so many new ideas, and the problem is I'm so busy making, filling orders all the time, and I'm a one-woman show that I don't get to do my art. Very rarely I get to sneak something in. So I want to start making time to do some art because it's how it all began. I don't want to lose my happiness and my joy, but I definitely need to protect myself and practice safety. I just I stirred that too hard. I found out the hard way th about being, uh, after four months of using uh, epoxy resin I became allergic to it so it built up in my system super fast probably because then I'm organic holistic person and uh, I really got zapped by chemicals so I'm wearing my goggles and my respirator and my gloves and I am still in the market for the full faced respirator I still need to. I've been buying so many supplies and tools for my company now. And that's going to be something that I'm going to try to get in the next couple months because it's super important to my health. I can't smell um, anything with the respirator that I do wear now. So I'm okay, but. I would like a respirator where I just, it's more open on the inside and I don't have to wear two separate units. I 
Alright, so I'm going to pour this into the second cup now. <coughs> this is where you want to be careful because from some of it dripping down on the outsides, it's hard to hold on to the cup. So, personally, I'll be changing my gloves out in a minute. Uh, I have no, I have no paperwork that came with these samples to try. I don't know uh, what the show, what the open pot time is on these or anything. So maybe if you go to the website, they might have more information on there. Um, I really haven't had any time since it's just a couple days past New Year's. Um, I like when I get paperwork sent to me that I can hold in my hand and read. I'm just old fashioned like that. I think data sheets are extremely important. Okay, I think I got most of it. There's always going to be a little bit that we can't get back. Yeah. And I just let the stick go, and I'm going to let these gloves go. And I'm going to put new gloves on. I keep a good stock of these from Harbor Freight. I get the coupons and the catalogs that me and my husband get. We each get our own catalog, so I get double the coupons. It's well worth it. I think I'm getting them sometimes $7.99 and then sometimes um, $5.99. Where there are 5 milliliter nitro gloves, there's 100 gloves in a box. So there are some things that I buy from Harbor Freight and many things that I won't buy from Harbor Freight, but so far I have had very good luck with these gloves. So if you haven't gotten a catalog, sign up for a catalog. Um, I forget how often the catalogs come, to be honest. I don't know if it's once a month or once every few months or whatever, but and then you get free products you can get some nice LED lights they have. They use batteries, but they're nice to have around in the shop to click pick up and light something up. And they have micro cloths and all kinds of little gadgets that are free. You don't even have to make a purchase, just take that coupon in. And you can always order online from that store. You just want to be smart about what you're ordering from them. But the gloves are definitely a good buy. Alright, so <coughs> I had put some colors into the cups already. I won't be naming the colors. Uh, you'll just see what they look like. I'm not going to... talk about the names of the colors. These I just received day after Christmas. Um, so I have to make some decisions soon on colors.
So mainly what I'm doing um, is I have a really long uh, faceted crystal mold and I want to just kind of like use different colors in the tips and then pour a little bit of clear with some sparkle colored uh, mica over the back of that and then sometimes the crystals come out really cool when they're two tone like that. I'd like to get more out of there. just has some glitter pieces in it. It's like party looking glitter. So that's for one of the molds that I have. I have a feeling it's just gonna they're all gonna drop to the bottom. Look like crap. But I wanted to check it out so here I have a pretty um iridescent I guess it's a color shift one but it's very faint so that'll look pretty in the background of the crystal mold and then I have this tealish peacock color now I didn't put a lot in these because I just kind of wanted to shade it. And I normally don't put the powder in the bottom of the cup without a resin in there. But I was trying to save some time. that might need a little bit more. I might just put a little more on that one. And here is the pink. A pretty pinkish shade. purple. Not sure that I made enough to fill all the molds that I wanted to. And this is a little bit of turquoise. I think they'll be pretty in the crystals, I really do. And this one was for a unicorn mold that I casted. 
like I said, I don't know if those are going to stay floaty or if they're going to sink to the bottom. Um, I have everything in the pot already and I don't... I like to pour it into the pot. I don't see how that's possible with the camera going, so I'll bring it back out. I feel like this mold might be a little bit... uneven. So I may have to prop it up and then prop it up in the pot. Sometimes that happens. It's hard to tell. So I'll just prop it up now in case. So what I wanted to do was just like pour stripes of color across in a diagonal. Just like that. These are a whole bunch of facets in this mold. Um, I haven't put this mold up for sale yet. It was an experiment. So I've never shown anybody one this long actually before. To be honest. It's a big faceted mold. These are not always easy to get out. So I don't quite know how the end result is going to be. So we're just doing the tips. See if I missed any. I missed a couple over here. I got them. So what I'm going to do next is I'm going to top it off with a little sparkle. I just do a thin stream, kind of like when I do the silicone mold work. I just kind of let things find their own level.
So the key to doing this in all one piece is to make sure that the resin goes all the way across. Um, I had to do some editing on the mold to make sure that it was deep enough in some places. So it was fun. And these will be going into the pressure pot. So hopefully there won't be any bubbles. Sometimes things don't always work out like we'd like with the pressure pot. And uh, if we lose some pressure or something, it's definitely going to get some bubbles. Um, from what I've been taught from the where I go for classes on my mold making um, pressure pot crushes the bubbles to where they can't be seen by the naked eye and if you have a pressure pot you do not need to do the gassing vacuum pot so you can avoid that whole step Maybe that is level. I was worried it wasn't going to be level. I really need it to. Be level. says that it's not level. So where I need to bring it level would be on the end here. So I'll grab a couple of short short sticks here and I'm going to put them under the end and re-level that to see if that's better. good enough for now. So I want it to be a little bit more on the bottom so I'm just going to put a drip of pink across the back of the pink to bring the level up a little of the base. Because it needs to be thicker. I need to have more of a base here. So I'm just going to take each color and go across the back where that color is. Just to add to it. getting pretty high now. And just a little bit of blue here. So it's doming a little bit. Just a little. That's good because I don't know how this epoxy is going to react but a lot of epoxies shrink a little bit when they dry. So I don't want this getting too concave.
think that's pretty good. So I'm going to put a couple sticks in the bottom of the pot where that end's going to be and double check it with my level. And I'm going to move you for a minute and very carefully lower this into the pot. And it looks like it needs some on the side. Alright, so it's as level as I can get it in the pot. Unfortunately, I can't get this camera over to the pot. So we're just going to have to deal with that. And I'll show you. I don't know if I have enough to do these two molds here. So... I don't think you could see inside this one. It's a unicorn head that I molded. And then this is a pretty heart with wings. So we know that this is not going to... It's going to bleed together no matter what I do. That's what's going to happen with that. So... So this is the pretty glitter one. I wonder if I should just put that in the heart one. I was going to put it in the unicorn one. Maybe I'll put it in both. Maybe if I just keep pushing this from side to side, it'll come out okay. You know, I can always just do the heart and then mold, you know, put that in the pressure pot and then come back and do the wings behind it. But I don't always have uh, patience for that. And I'm going to put a little in the back, the dome it. So it, the pressure could just push that all over the place, and who knows what's going to happen. We won't know till tomorrow. Maybe next time I'll take the time to do it the other way. These are the first castings of these. So I don't know, maybe I will uh, get out another mold and mold something. And uh, I wanted to do this one pink, but I don't think I'm going to have enough. Maybe I'll just mix the pink into the sequins a little bit. I don't want to make it too opaque. Just tint it. I think it'll be okay. I think I still get the gist of it. We'll see. We'll see what it turns out to be. I think it's still transparent enough. 
just don't know if it's going to be enough to fill it. But there's a horn down in there, so what I have here. It's on a really long skewer. To figure out where the horn exactly is. Just kind of poke down to the center that can remove any air bubbles where an air bubble might form. And there it is. It goes to the top. And you want to do that in your crystal molds. Like I probably should have done it in that mold too. But I totally forgot about poking around in the tips. Maybe I'll just go over with the skewer. Well, that was nice. That filled up nice. Okay. So let me get this into the pot. shelf in there mm, it's pretty level so I have a couple skull molds here and I do need to mold some skulls because those beautiful trinket boxes that I'm making now need some cool looking embellishments on top of them. Just got to get the dust out of them. These molds ended up sitting and not getting put away properly. You always want to keep your molds in a little Ziploc baggie or a big Ziploc baggie keeps the dirt and the dust off them. These are pretty dusty right now. So I'm going to mix this purple into here. I don't know if I'm going to have enough to fill these or not, but they might end up being layered. I know that's not enough. So this green might be enough here, this beautiful bluish color actually. We'll pour that into one. I know you want to be looking at my hand the whole time. I'm sorry about that. A little of the blue and with the peacock. Okay, 
Okay, so we got one skull blue. And this is not going to be enough. So what I'll do is I'll end up putting some filler in. Base filler. Well, let's see how much we get. We might get close. I really love these party glitters. They're all the different size round colors mixed together. They look like a party. Definitely going to order some of them to sell on the website. Yeah, 2020 is about uh, bringing in a lot more products to promote on the website. So, if anybody's watching that has any products they'd like me to promote, sell, feel free to get in touch. I just hit 500 subscribers today, so we're going to be doing a giveaway, so I'm pretty excited about that. It's been a year, it took a year for me to get 500. So I'm going to go and grab some base filler. I also like using the broken mirrors, and sometimes I use stone or glass. But when you come up to it, you have to improvise. So these are just plastic base filler from Marcus. I've been using these a lot lately. I really, I got them on, I don't know if I bought that whole thing or if I got it on a clearance rack where it might have been opened or something like that. Sometimes I get some products like that. So from afar, you wouldn't see these, but if you look up close, once it's cured, you will see the round, the little roundness of them. make sure they're covered with resin just so that they all glisten the same take on the same form so there you have it so it's definitely worth it to get some of these uh, I did get it on clearance regularly $8.99 I paid $2.25 and this was not full it was open and spilled in the store, so I was, I always go to the clearance shelves. As soon as I walk into the store, I go to the damage clearance and the regular clearance, and then I shop from there when I go to Michael's, or any store for that matter. So we're going to put this in the pressure pot. And we'll be back tomorrow at some point to open them up and see what's going on. Thanks for watching. And check out LeeCrunchCreations.com. Lots of new stuff coming up. Um, there's a coupon code in there right now. 
for the new year 2020 20 dollars off a hundred dollar order and i'm going to be putting a code in there in my members area for the members and i'm um, going to be sending out an email to all my past customers with a very special code so if you have ordered from me and you read my emails you're going to get a, a one-time code that i've never done before so i'm pretty excited about that and i'm doing a giveaway on my youtube channel for 500 subscribers so watch for that video coming up in the next seven days i'll put that out and um probably be doing some uh coaster molds and a geode mold and uh, maybe something else maybe i'll put it uh, put in a beautiful sample of the new sparkle gold mica powder that is not available in our country it is incredible so thanks for watching have a good evening It's the day after. It's been 24 hours. Um, not really sure the actual cure time on this resin because I didn't get any data sheets sent with it. So I really don't know. The specifics. So this was the unicorn that we had done. Peeking at it. Taking a little peek. Um let's see if I can get my phone up to help out with the pictures. So this is the new little heart. It um, when I put it into the pot, it kind of tipped a little. How pretty is that? Just gonna trim that little overflow off. And it's beautiful. Definitely loving that mold. And the party glitter. I like that glitter. Definitely going to stock that in 2020. mold is awesome. Very cool. So let's look at the unicorn mold that we did. Let me see if I can get this out without using anything else to help. So if I pull it back on the main and pull it out, it comes out without any 
water lace. How's that? No water. I'm loving that. And if I wanted to, I could just take my liquid gold and just put a little gold across that if I wanted to. Even looks cool with the party glitter in it. I love it. Looks like we got ourselves a new unicorn mold. I'll be listing that up on the website as soon as possible. Beautiful. Okay, we'll pop out our so our skulls. We made a couple skulls with the leftovers. These molds are on sale website. I put pretty little gemstones in the eyes. Really love them a lot. That came out beautiful. I also have a medium skull. And I also have to plug this phone in quickly. Yeah. He's a party skull. Very cool. All right. So I don't know how long this could take to undo. This is a brand new, a brand new crystal mold. It's a big one, biggest one yet. Biggest one I ever made. I don't even know if it's gonna come out. But we shall see. Start getting some air under it. Definitely pulling back on it. Get some of the crystals to pull back. This is going to take a while. It may have to even go in water. Holding it close to my chest right now to get, try to get a grip on it. I may end up needing to wait to get help to get this out.
definitely a tough one. These crystals go in all directions. So, so far, that's all I've got. <laughs> it's coming slowly. Just going around all the edges, trying to pull back on it. Oh. It's a tough one. But if you really want a cool mold like this, you're going to struggle with it. Because this is the biggest yet. I can't seem to get... There we go. I'm getting some of the other side now. See, I got a little bit on that side and a little bit on that side. So I just have to keep working it from each side. And like I said, the, the facets are going in all directions, so that makes it difficult to pull the silicone back. But it's not impossible because it's starting to come out. So I'll show you where we're at. So we're getting some of it out. I've got one end that's starting to come out. And I'd like to keep it under the camera, but I can't do that and pull at the same time. So please bear with me. So if anybody wants to order this actual mold, you need to know ahead of time that you're going to use your strength. Okay. That it's going to be slow going getting it off. Why anybody would want a big crystal fast mold like this? Well, I don't know. <laughs> but it's been on my mind to do this for a while. So I thought for the new year. Oh, we would jump in. And I'm trying to get it off. Without snapping it. Um, some resins that you use will break while you're doing this. So this is 24 hours after I put this resin in. So as you see, I have half of it's out. Or well, almost half of it's out. So I'm just going to keep working with it. And pulling back the mold and pulling back the casting. And sometimes I take a little micro cloth and I put it around the edge of the mold so that it doesn't hurt my fingers on the edges because they can tend to feel sharp and be sharp and I don't want to pry anything under it now you can soak this in water and it might come out easier but because of the directions that the crystals are going in that's what's giving it the resistance some of these are large round pieces you know they're rounder at the bottom than they are at the top okay I got another section starting to come off we are making a little headway here so, I am gripping it with both hands. See, I got it out this far. I just hope it doesn't break. 
like I said, I got the crystals going in all directions. Um, I hand placed some of them that they were ah, going back and forth. So I see a big, jagged a big, jagged crystal shooting across the other direction on this. I'm going to try to pull that direction back. And I want you to see what I have to, how long it takes to get this out so that there's no crying after people purchase the mold. You need to see that it's going to take you some strength to get this off if you want it. Now, I, like I said, I could have soaked it in some water and it might have made it a little bit easier. But I don't have water down here where I'm at. Oh, jeez. And I really want to try. You see, I got that end out. I'm really trying to do it by hand without anything to see how difficult it really is. Because this is an experiment after all. So I'm still holding it close to my belly and my chest to get some leverage and pull on it. Okay. And we're almost out. It's almost out. Okay. Let's see if I can... I'd like to pull it out on camera, but I can't guarantee that that's going to happen. There's the big, the big one. The big one just came out. Okay. So we got it out. I'm going to say that was a good seven or eight minute struggle. I just want to bend it back a little bit. It worked a little bit coming out because of bending it. Okay. All right, so we did it. So that's the biggest, longest. Super sparkle crystal facet mold. That I have made to date. And you remember I went in stripes with the colors. Blue, purple, pink, blue, purple, blue. That's a teal color. So what I can do is actually set it, try to bend it back, but I can also set it on my furnace and that'll flatten it out overnight. So I want to take my cloth, my micro cloth, and I want to go rub on each of the facets in case there's any marks from the gloves. I use no mold release with this, just a lot of strength and patience. I didn't pry it, I didn't put any metal underneath of it or heavy wood pieces and pry it up. So I shared my struggle with you. I'm happy with this idea and experiment. The tips look beautiful and then the sparkle mica powder is behind that and there you have it gigantic super sparkle mold
this is what the mold looks like. It's a nice chunk of silicone. Um, it's definitely not going to be a cheap mold. That's a that's a lot of silicone right there. Unfortunately, but it was an experiment. It was a fun piece for me to try to make. So I really hope you like that. LaCrenchCreations.com. Check it out. We're having a good time. And the resin we use once again is from the epoxy resin store epoxy resin and curing agent a and b says it's made in the usa i don't have any data sheets on it you can look this up on their website i suppose at the epoxy resin store i wish i could tell you more about it but i don't know more about it so so far so good does it yellow? I haven't a clue. I guess we'll find out. I left it in the pot. Um, let's see. It, it's been at least 10 hours since I casted this. So it could have been done in just a few hours. I haven't a clue. Uh, I had to go out shopping today and I left it in the pressure pot. So all these pieces here were made with that brand. If you go to their website and look at their resins, you can match up the label. And um, I'll have to go read and see if there's any spec specs on it with information. And the colors um, I'm testing for my company uh, because I'll be branding this year. So... I won't be giving out any information on the colors other than if you like those colors you can let me know so that I can consider carrying these colors. Thank you LaCrenchCreations.com. We just hit 500 subscribers on YouTube so I'll be doing a giveaway video shortly so make sure you are subscribed. Rock on people make something beautiful.